blessed us with. Thank you for helping us come together as a family in your presence, Lord. We pray for our students as they have gathered here today. Fill them with knowledge and understanding. Let's help them with your wisdom and patience and help them choose their career wisely. May the various activities related to this program be a success to your intention. You're on mute. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, participants. Please stay mute. Um, there's a famous saying to plant a garden is to see the better future. Keeping this in mind, Today, we have gathered here to get an insight into the graduate attributes a student will attain after pursuing botany in the UG and PG programs. In this program, we intend to enlighten our young minds onto how these attributes are going to help them in designing their promising future and what are the diverse career opportunities in the field of botany. In regard to this, Today, we are happy to have amongst us Professor P. Ravichandran, Head Department of Plant Science, Manon Manyan Sundrana University, Trinal Valley. A very warm welcome, sir. Now, I yeah. request Dr. Sumati, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, MCC, to introduce our dignified speaker for the day. Over to you, Sumati, ma'am. Thank you, Priyanka. It's a great privilege for me to introduce Dr. Peter Ravichandran, Head, Department of Plant Sciences at Manomanyan Sundarnar University, Tirnalveli. Sir, did his undergraduation from Loyola and moved on to Madras Tristan College for his post-graduation and PhD. Dr. Ravi Chandran specializes in the field of plant conservation, plant biotechnology, agroestology, and natural dyes. He has worked extensively in, on in vitro conservation of many rare endangered medicinal plants. At present, he is working on molecular markers for assessment of genetic diversity of medicinal plants and grasses. Sir, also takes a keen interest in application of natural dyes as an alternative for synthetic dyes and industrial fibers. Sir is also experimenting on employing natural dyes as biological stains for localization of plant biochemicals, DNA, RNA, and various other tissue components. He has 30 years of research experience and 23 years of teaching experience. He has guided 13 PhD students and he has also guided the three postdoctoral students. Dr. Ravi Chandran has published nearly 20 research articles in peer reviewed journals and has authored eight books, contributed to nearly 15 book chapters and monographs. He has delivered lead talks in many national and international conferences. Dr. Ravi Chandran is also a recipient of many awards and scholarships. To mention a few, he is an advocate commissioner appointed by, appointed by Madras High Court for assessing the impact of sand mining in, at the River Kaveri. He is a natural dyes uh, specialist expert for UNESCO France. He is an uh, expert on Indian grasses from, for Ministry of Environment and Forest. Sir is also a part of Species Survival Commission of International Union for Conservation, Switzerland. He is a potential mentor for DST Inspire program. Sir has many more credentials. With this brief introduction, I would like to call upon Dr. P. Ravi Chandran to deliver his talk on why botany. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Sumadhi. 
Sir, you are not audible, sir. One second. Is that audible? Is that audible? Dimati? Sir, yes. 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 Is that audible now? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Over. Ah, yes. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Sumati, for a nice uh, introduction about me. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the slide. In fact, uh, you know, it gives me immense pleasure to meet all the young botanists of uh, Carmel Mount College, Bangalore, the faculty members and the administration. I would like to uh, extend my warm thanks to uh, all the uh, people who were involved in organizing this uh, lecture series. In fact, uh, you know, uh, this is a surprise for me to uh, talk about how to inspire uh, botany students, though I've uh, given same kind of a lecture at a couple of uh, more institution, institutions. But uh, talking through online is, uh, you know, somewhat uh, and quite different. Anyway, I'll go on to the topic. Next slide, uh, Sumati. Can you see the slide, sir? Ah, yes, very well. Yeah, thank you, sir. When we think of botany, you know, uh, parents have uh, different views about what their students, what their uh, children should prefer or children to become in near future. And nearly about 90% in Indian uh, conditions, almost all the parents plan it in such a way that their wards should become either doctor or engineer. And if not these two, probably at the later level, the uh, other uh, four grades, either in computer or MBA or business. And as the last research, probably it will be basic sciences. Though basic sciences are the fundamental ones, which gives an important uh, understanding or a, or a comprehensive understanding about what life is all about. Next slide. But when it comes to students, and if they are forced to take up basic sciences, here is an hierarchy starting from maths, next level to chemistry, and then to physics, then the recent subject biotechnology, biochemistry, and then once a fascinating subject, microbiology, now it's just again reviving recognition at every nook and corner, and then zoology, people who are unable to uh, get into uh, Medicine will always prefer zoology, thinking that at one point of time they can still become a medicine student. And as a last result, students prefer botany, or sometimes they are forced to take up botany because no other course is given. Never mind, whatever is your subject, right? But botany is not. Just poking your nose deep into the subject. But botany is somewhat trying to realize what life is all about. You can learn your life through understanding about plants. That's what is my perception on learning botany. Next slide. That is the reason why, you know, uh, in the beginning, the term botan, though it was derived from Greek, but it has given 
because the kind of plants which are responsible for feeding the entire world are from grasses. So literal meaning is that botan means pasture or food or fodder. And that is the main reason why in Bible, next, next slide. Yeah, fine, this is okay. That's okay. So in the beginning, previous slide. In the beginning, life was, you know, uh, or life or science was understood after the discovery of cells from plant tissues. You know, that gave a major way out to understand all kinds of living organisms. The first cell which was looked under the microscope was the uh, cock cells of a plant tissue. Now because of which, now we have learned so many advanced informations about living organisms. And the key was this discovery of uh, cells. And uh, yes, this one, you can see it in the Bible, all flesh is grass, meaning everything, all kind of food comes from plants, either directly or indirectly. That's the actual uh, understanding that we need to have. So if that is so, if all kinds of life on planet Earth depends on plants for their survival, then understanding about such plants is greater than anything else. And that's how I perceive botany. Next one. Yes, if you uh, look at the food, the major staple food of Asian countries, we rely on rice. But how many of us will know that we have about 1,20,000 cultivable varieties of rice all over the world? And all this 1,20,000 cultivable uh, varieties of rice are deposited in uh, Philippines, the International Rice Research Institution. We also do have about 50,000 cultivars being deposited, being stored in Indian Rice Research Institute, Katak. So that is the significance of food, or the uh, staple food that comes from uh, rice. And if we are not going to learn about these kind of plants, or the field, then probably we would be missing something terrible. If you look at the other uh, picture on, your, on the top of your left side, the kind of grasses uh, which are part of the uh, food basket, hardly about five or six major grasses. Again, besides rice and wheat, rice and maize, there are five more grasses which become a source of food basket for the entire world. So predominantly, plants are the food and fodder for all kinds of organisms in this world. Next one. So why study botany? As I said, plants are very diverse. And uh, literally, people who study about plants become botanists or plant scientists. And they all share a common interest and in curiosity about the hundreds and thousands of species on planet Earth. Still, we haven't completely described all the available organisms or plant species in this earth. There are thousands, or almost every year, nearly about 2,000 species are being described as a new species, which means 
which indicates that there are a lot more to discover from the plants group itself. If you look at the diversity of plants assets, this is just one simple example, more than sufficient to explain about what is diversity. This is one single genus called Serapegias, beautiful flowering plants, though they are very minute, they are very short, herbaceous in nature, sometimes climbing in nature, but they produce such a beautiful uh, floral structures. Imagine there are so many, more than 140 species of Serapegias just in Western Ghats alone in India. Why is such, why such diversity exist? Is it just because of creation or is it because of the millions or billions of years of evolution? Who has understood the mechanism behind these diverse systems? No one else. Botanists just discover their existence. But the theory behind it, the logic behind such kind of variations are still to be explored. Next slide. Yeah. The same flowers, if you just look at the stigma law, look at the top surface of the stigma, the color, the contrast, the architecture, the engineering aspect of it. So complicated, so beautiful it is, and so well defined they are. Who is responsible for this kind of engineering and architecture? And who has really understood what that means exactly? Such an architecture or an engineering pattern to be present on the uh, surface of the stigma, what is the need for it? How many of us have really understood this phenomenon? Still, people are yet to define why such uh, architecture marvel exists on the stigma of some of the flowers. I mean, almost all the flowers. We have no scientists. Still, we need a large number of scientists to discover such kind of architectural designs in plants and animals too. Just take a look at the uh, leaf base of uh, the giant lily, Victoria regina. This is of the largest uh, uh, floating lily. The base of the leaf, or the, the other side of the leaf has such a mechanism so that the leaf can easily float on water. We have not understood the logic behind it, or probably we know the principle, but how such structure is built by the leaf or by the plant as such is still not clear. Uh, we need many more scientists to understand this type of architecture. Next slide. And look at the beauty of uh, insectivorous plants. Plants have, we know very well that plants have evolved alongside that of animals, birds, butterflies, bees, or any other living creature, uh, for example, right? So co-evolution has resulted in evolving better and better adaptational features among plants as well as in uh, the uh, surrounding or dependent organisms. This is a picture plant. You look at the beauty, the architecture, the design, that it has a trapping system for trapping insects and uh, certain animals. Even lizards can be trapped. Even small snakes can be trapped. Birds can be trapped. But once they uh, slide into this trap, they cannot come out. They cannot easily escape out of these traps. So such is the uh, engineering marvel within the plant system as such. We are still to understand these mechanisms. And uh, other uh, type of insectivorous plants, but uh, I'm not going to just explain in detail, but just to mention one thing that in the side of this drosera, there are small glands available. Those glands are responsible for you know, giving signal to the plant that there is an insect inside, electrical stimuli. Recently, Atten, uh, Atten, David Attenborough has posted a video in the uh, YouTube. Probably you can access that one and then and try to understand the beauty of it. 
why I'm showing this slide is to uh, you is that we still have a lot more to understand in terms of botany and in terms of, next slide, in terms of other biological organisms. The next slide shows a couple of insects, one over the other. I hope uh, some of you are able to identify what this insect is. Probably if you are awake during the night time and the, the sky is uh, darker, and if it is not much light in the cities, probably you can recognize these fireflies, beautiful fireflies, right? And uh, the, the one on the bottom is the uh, female, the one on the top is the uh, male butterfly. But how many of you know what is the food system preferred by these butterflies? Next one. The actual uh, food for these uh, fireflies are snails. Snails feed on fresh leaves from plants. And uh, it gathers its food from plants. And then these snails become prey for, next one, the uh, female uh, fireflies. Look at the uh, female firefly eating the entire snail. Similarly, the male firefly can also feed on the snails, but not to this extent. But this female firefly gathers not just the food alone, but also certain proteins which are essential for uh, producing light. So once the uh, flesh go gets into uh, the uh, firefly, probably it gains, next slide, it gains a protein called luciferin. This luciferin, you know, on oxidation, probably uh, uh, trying to go for bioluminescence, a wonderful mechanism where sunlight is now uh, reproduced in a different format. And that's why fireflies during the nighttime, we are able to uh, visualize the uh, lighting from fireflies. But even during the daytime, lights are available, but because of the uh, brightness of the sun, we are not able to uh, see the uh, luminescence that comes from fireflies. But the set of information that I've given you is just not to uh, make you understand biology, but botany in a holistic manner. Learning botany has to be very comprehensive, and you will have lots and lots of insights just because of understanding plants around you. Next one. The other areas where plants can contribute is about medicines, that everyone knows about it, but thousands of medicines are being produced uh, or obtained from plants directly, also from indirectly. So uh, if you uh, take a look at uh, willow or foxglove or pacific yew or coffee, whatnot, any kind of uh, medicine or uh, food supply, any other uh, sort of uh, items are derived directly from plants. So we need to understand plants in more detail, to look for more promising, economically important uh, products. Next one. These are a couple of examples just to make you understand where our medicines are derived from. Next one. Next one, Artemisia for uh, mosquito bite and mosquito other malarial uh, diseases. Next one. So why we need to study botany? And uh, in case if you have an interest to understand ecological and global process, botanical knowledge is very, very critical. Or if you just want to learn how to grow bigger vegetables, larger vegetables, more colorful flowers or healthier lawns, botany will be extremely beneficial to what the one who is interested in or the one who is really focused on learning botany. Next slide. Probably you would have seen these kind of pictures in the public domain, like either watermelon or pumpkins or any other uh, you know, cucurbit uh, fruits, how to make them different from their usual uh, shape and size. This kind of watermelon was designed with a very simple mechanism by understanding its physiology. Our larger vegetables are also produced uh, just by understanding their requirements. 
And uh, for these kind of facilities, you know, uh, one need not spend hours together, but just simple thinking. Critical thinking is, you know, always required at this level to produce the required results. Next one. Yes, you are aware of uh, all kinds of uh, roses. Probably these kind of roses are the result of genetic engineering or gene transfer technology that plant molecular biologists have uh, understood and because of which you have colorful, highly bright colored roses and other uh, flowers. Next one. It is because of the understanding. This one, probably uh, tulips. Yes, we have again more than 15 different uh, array of colors, pigments which are produced in the uh, flowers of uh, tulip. But there are also natural phenomena for these kind of variations in color. But man has induced several other colors because of his understanding and uh, potential to transform different colors in tulip as such. Next slide. I just want uh, any one of any one of the uh, students to uh, you know uh, answer this question: Why there are color differences in this particular flower alone? Any one student can uh, answer the difference between these two colors. The, uh, there are two flowers pictured, one above and the one at the bottom. One of you can just tell me why there is such a color difference in the same species of glory lily. This is Gloriosa and uh, highly attractive uh, lily flower, which uh, comes as a weed or uh, grows as a common uh, weed elsewhere. Anyone? Anybody? Just one simple reason why these color changes are available. Incomplete dominance. Mm, okay, fine. Anyway, I'm I'm going to uh, get you the uh, answer. Very simple mechanism. The color changes in flowers are natural. As during the early stages, some flowers are different color, and as and when the flower mature, they have a different color pattern. And also, certain flowers after pollination, they change their color. Here is a mechanism for bees and butterflies and moths and birds to identify which flower has the nectar, which flower has the honey in it, which flower has the uh, food for the uh, you know uh, the uh, bees and butterflies and birds. So this flower doesn't want to waste the energy of the honey feeding insects and butterflies and birds. Rather, it try to signify indirectly that. I have no more honey, so don't waste your time. That is the kind of an indication that the, this flower wants to uh, deliver once it is pollinated and fertilized. So pollinated and fertilized flowers will change its color, wonderful enzymatic reactions and wonderful you know, a reflection of information to the uh, pollinators just by this flower alone. There are several hundreds of flowers to change the color pattern of the pollination, try to signify that pollination is over to the pollinator. This mechanism, you know, uh, it's not, yeah, fine. So this mechanism has been understood elaborately, but still what critical enzymes, how they change this color pattern, how they reaction, how quick is the reaction, all that needs to be understood all that needs to be researched. Next slide, Asmati. So my uh, objective is to make you uh, think different, differently, never to have a conventional thinking, right? What to study about botany, how to go about it and all that. Because your thinking ability is not just recent. It's been there since your, uh, you know, uh, since inception since the beginning, right? So you have all this potential. So what is required is very, very critical thinking is required to choose your future, your understanding, your lifestyle. Next time, next slide. So when it comes to what to study, yes, you can read it out. 
but I will also just make a you know a emphasis on the uh, points mentioned here. Many kinds of plant biologists and uh, many different opportunities available all over the world. But botanists are interested in ecology, study interactions, plants with other organisms, and the environment. Other fields of botany, uh, botanists search to find new species and do experiments with to discover how plants grow under different habitat conditions. Uh, some botanists who study the structure of plants, they may work in the field and concentrate on the pattern of the entire plant as such. So likewise, you know, a field differs from uh, place to place or person to person, or it depends on one individual to select which aspect of botany has to be mastered. Next one. Again, uh, others use uh, microscopes to study most detailed fine structure of individuals like anatomy, and many botanists do experiments to determine how plants convert simple chemical compounds into more chemical compounds. And some may have uh, to study genetic information in uh, DNA and how it is able to control the entire growth and development or sustain, sustaining itself towards next uh, uh, generations. And botany also proceed study to uh, process that occur on time scale ranging from various fractions of a second in individual cells to those that unfold over eons of evolutionary time. The other uh, interesting area that has recently uh, been attracting students is forensic botany. Next slide. Though forensic botany is not uh, very recent, but uh, you know uh, it's been there, but it was not recognized well all over the world. Uh, many people who are aiming for becoming uh, you know uh, uh, helpers in forensic botany and uh, this one is catching up you know uh, very uh, importantly in this uh, period of uh, time next one i had a dream when i was uh, doing phd in madras christian college tambram that one day i will also have a nice microscope like this to study the in-depth aspects of plant anatomy. You know, this was, this was probably in 1991. And uh, next slide. Yes, I was able to get, acquire similar or better uh, kind of a microscope with all kinds of research potential and uh, publications. And uh, DBT was there to uh, provide me such a facility or more than these facilities. I was able to acquire not just microscope alone, but I was able to uh, set up entire plant genetic engineering laboratory or plant molecular biology laboratory because of the dream that I had some 10 or 30 years back that I will become a proper, probably either a teacher or a scientist to work on plants. So such a dreaming is essential or such a dreaming is, uh, you know, must in any kind of a botanist for that matter. Next one. Based, next one, yes. Based on the kind of studies that I've done, no, yes, this is the one. You know, uh, you will be recognized elsewhere. The person who is standing in the middle of the picture is Professor Mohan Ram, who's uh, no more now, recently passed away, but you know, he was there to recognize my findings, my publications and all that. And then he called me over to Delhi he said, you are coming there to present your findings in front of an uh, international audience at Indian Institute of uh, Indian International Culture Center. And that conference was just meant for one single plant, indigo. But, uh, you know, I, I, was, I haven't done much research at that particular time on indigo dye, but I have worked on several other uh, dyes and pigments from plants. But Professor Mohan Ram made it clear to me that you are going to be a only person who is going to talk about other kinds of colorants and uh, dyes from plants other than indigo in the particular Congress on indigo itself. So such kind of recognition will not just come easily unless your contribution uh, is maximum or your contribution is something uh, different from others. So you need to uh, think differently and uh, you need to focus uh, your studies in a different manner. Next one. 
yes these are subjects probably your uh, teachers and your uh, you know mentors will keep talking about all the subjects these are variety of uh, subjects within plants or plant science or within uh, botany as such one can prefer to study never think that i'm just trying to focus on research alone but botany as other fields too next one next slide yes the other opportunities are educational institutions federal and state agencies and industries previous slide uh, dr smith old job opportunities usually depend on educational training and experience new positions in botany are expected to increase at an above average rate through the turn of the century a growing world population continues to increase the need for better food supplies better hybrid crops and environmental concerns such as air water soil pollution will create openings or already created openings for ecologists in government and industrial sector so the search for new drugs and medicines and useful genes for improving crop plants also continue to uh, create a niche for botanical uh, experts and explorers so being an msc candidate probably or uh, in case if you happen to do msc or masters uh, botany you may have two more important options there are also plenty of other so you are on mute oh yeah thank you can you just go uh, one slide before ah yes one slide one slide before uh, somebody research yeah yes so uh, you can either take up uh, doctoral study or there are other uh, you know humpty number of uh, uh, professions which recognize pg degree or msc botany degree so that it, that can offer you uh, job potential but if you want to focus on research probably there are a couple of competitive exams which you may have to qualify like uh, national entrance level test or junior either to become a junior research fellow or a senior research fellow or a research associate whatever you call it either through ugc or through csir net exams next one yes but if you are landing for phd please uh, have a you know a critical thinking or uh, you know comprehensive understanding about what this doctoral fellowship is all about or what this doctoral program is all about this picture i have taken it nearly uh, i think it was 1992 appeared in current science our own journal from published from uh, bangalore but even now there is a hue and cry about these doctoral uh, fellowships and doctoral programs we recently would have also uh, uh, heard from the public domain whatsapps and other uh, news that near to jnu at delhi there is a shop which is selling phd thesis you know uh, this is not happening anywhere else in the world but this is happening in india and this has happened in india 30 years back itself where real phd is not you know uh, conferred on qualified people phd can be bought and phd can be ruining somebody's life if you happen to go into a uh, you know wrong uh, guide or a supervisor so please have a thinking in case if you are going for a phd program select your mentors and guides and supervisors based on their contributions and based on their professional uh you know uh, capacity and talent and also check on their ethical aspects and values and then probably your phd would be really interesting and uh, you will have lots of new discoveries based on your phd program next one yes why again to uh, some of the uh, uh, you know uh, important aspects yes this i uh, said about you 
But if you want to search for a new medicine or advance the frontiers in the study of cellular and molecular plant processes, working with a botanist can lead you in the right direction. So not just medicinal aspects alone. There are, again, very uh, different aspects with an array of aspects of botany can be learned at the master's level as well as at the uh, research level. Next one. Yes, to become a, a national level researcher or at the international level researchers, these are some of the eligible uh, criteria that one has to uh, acquire. Yes, you need to get either TOEFL cleared or IELTS uh, cleared, and the scores will uh, definitely uh, make you reach good institutions. Next one. Yes, when you happen to uh, land up for uh, research or at the master's level, you need to have certain uh, skills or you need to acquire these skills uh, so that that can help you shape your uh, understanding or shape your uh, capacity, like in terms of accuracy and attention, detail, a methodical approach of uh, performing and uh, uh, ability to analyze, interpret and report on data, and uh, also you need to have a very strong uh, communication skills, practical skills, and so that you can solve certain problems with ease. Next one. Yeah. When in the happen to uh, be a researcher, your working hours will vary according to your kind of project that you have select. Or you may be involved in continuous monitoring of a plant species so that you will work and social hours and you may also have to work in field and can which in which may involve a lot of travel and often overseas so you might spend long periods of time away from home this is with reference to uh, uh, research and phd in level of uh, uh, programs next one Career path and progression. While experience in industry, you could move into a more senior position in case you have opted through botany. In field research and conservation, you will usually need to take up organizational management or advisory responsibilities and in order to progress further. You can also move into plant science, investigating biodiversity, crop production, and plant diseases. And you can still also become a freelance consultant uh, with reference to plant crops and plant science uh, or in botany as such. Next one. Other educational uh, opportunities like one can land up in other uh, places where uh, people employ most plant biologists range from high school level to community colleges and universities. In case of high schools and the community colleges have few openings. Now there are many openings for those who wish to teach specialized courses and there is little time uh, or recruitment for research activity at this level. Nevertheless, for botanists who primarily enjoy teaching and such positions are always satisfying. Next one. Most positions for professional plant scientists are in colleges and universities and research institutions and industries. Almost all colleges and universities offer courses in plant science and there are faculty positions for botanists who have different uh, specializations. In addition, educational institutions employ botanists as researchers and also as administrators. Next one. Other, other uh, uh, places where a botany student can find a place is industry, a major uh, sector for uh, or platform for you know botanists to uh, aspire or to botanists to uh, experience their uh, you know potential. There's uh, drug companies, oil industry, chemical industry, timber and lumber and paper industries, seed and nursery companies, food, fruit growers food companies, fermentation industries, biological 
supply houses and biotechnology firms all hire men and women trained who are trained well in botany. Recently, the first genetically altered food crop, the flavor saver tomato, has reached the uh, supermarkets. And uh, likewise, there are many more crops to uh, come into the supermarket because of their uh, better designed potential, better uh, uh, design storage facility and uh, nutritional facility and all that. So uh, opportunities are plenty and in case if you learn botany in a better uh, manner. Next one. Botany also offers many interesting and worthwhile career opportunities. The work is frequently varied and the surroundings uh, are always pleasant. Because of the great diversity in plant sciences, people with many different backgrounds, abilities, interests can find a satisfying career in botany. Next one. So these are, you know, uh, a list of uh, places or uh, subjects one can can re uh, really choose. It's up to you to choose. Out of this, out of the box also you can think, right? But, uh, you know, uh, these are uh, the places where your potential, your ability is well recognized all over the world, not just in India alone, all over the world. These are the places which give an emphasis on a person who has been trained well in botany. Next one. But when it comes to uh, a job or a learning process, the word that you should never have is this one. Never be satisfied with what you have. Never be complacent about what you have learned. Learning is a lifetime program. Throughout the life, one can keep learning themselves, learning about the surroundings, learning about the subject, right? So never try to aspire for an easy job and a high salary uh, professional, but always try to have a place where you can put in hard work, you can have lots of questions, and uh, you can be evaluated many times, without, uh, you know, uh, with more and more of targets and a challengeable profession and where you can dedicate yourself fully so that you can discover and uh, you can be socially important to the entire uh, society and where you can put in your self-esteem. Such kind of job profession will always bring in respects and significance into your life. So never be Pleasant with what you have. Aim for a better one. There are a couple of experiments that I just wanted to uh, share with you. These are the experiments that we have done in our labs during the early uh, 90s. How water moves into the plant. How food moves. How food moves into a rice grain. Very simple experiments have proven, uh, have brought several much complicated understandings in uh, in the field of uh, food supply and water uh, transport in plants using this particular experiment. What you are seeing is a very simple experiment done to uh, done in rice grain, how water and food moves into the rice grain as such. Next one. Take a look at the pollen grain of rice as such. It looks as if there is a orange fruit. This was seen under the uh, scanning electron microscope where how the entire pollen grain of rice looks like. There are more than 450 different families of angiosperms whose pollen grains are going to be different from each other. Look at its diversity and uh, you know, versatility in terms of architectural designs at very, very minute level of cells and tissues and organs. This is a wonder, in fact, one has to explore. Next one. Even the rice grain can become a nest, a house for certain insects and beetles. Take a look at the uh, beetle that goes into the rice grain and then nest itself and try to feed on the uh, you know, carbohydrates that are available in the rice grain. So though it is small, still there is life on it. 
and uh, we can ponder, we can you know, probe into all those details and study why they are. Next one. And these are tiny insects which are still, you know, uh, uh, dwell with that of rice growth and development. On the uh, second picture at the bottom, probably you can see aphids probing into rice grain. Uh, directly to the uh, uh, food source, they can probe and send the proboscis and then take the uh, food stuff alone. Such is the coevolution of plants and animals. We are still, you know, uh, to discover and yet to uh, find many more intricate relationships with that of plants and animal uh, systems. Next one. Take a look at this picture. How once the aphid in, uh, probes or you know poke its uh, proboscis to the uh, plant tissue, the proboscis goes directly into the phloem tissue, uh, it not to xylem or not to uh, the neighboring cells, but just to the phloem tissue because the insect knows that that is the region or that is a cell which transports the uh, food. So this aphid is, you know, evolved, and the plant systems are also equally evolved to, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a sustainable life or a comprehensive life here. The uh, aphid is able to draw its nutrients just from the phloem. That is the beauty of, you know, uh, botany. You know, uh, you can think of God in this place, but I, I always think of evolution at such intricate places when I uh, look at uh, how insects and how minute structures of uh, plants are exhibited on the microscope. Next one. This is a relationship between plants and animals and uh, human beings. I want to uh, uh, make you understand here. Probably uh, when it comes to rice and that to uh, for making biryani, probably we always prefer that we go for basmati rice because it is highly aromatic, slender, slime, uh, slim in uh, shape and structure and all that. Tasty, yes. But beyond that, we always look for the smell. The smell comes from this particular chemical called 2-acetyl uh, pyrrolin. And this is the stuff which gives the aroma to that of the uh, you know, uh, rice as such. But uh, you know the beauty in nature, the same chemical is also present in a plant called pandanus. Pandanus amaridifolius, which is a very short or dwarf pandanus. Marilis lily. And uh, the other uh, fascinating uh, aspect is that this chemical is also present in tiger urine. Look at the uh, relationships. Why this 2AP is present in rice? Why is it also present in pandanus? And what is the reason for this chemical to be present in uh, tiger urine? In the case of tiger urine, male tiger can easily recognize the availability of female tigers based on the smell, based on the aroma of the urine. Or the tiger, male tiger can also have its own uh, boundary. Territory can be marked by its uh, urine. And uh, in the case of uh, amaryllis lily, yes, the uh, young leaves of amaryllis lily can be, you know, just cooked with that of ordinary rice and still you can get the aroma of basmati rice. So there are very, very significant intricate molecules which are available in plants, which we need to, uh, you know, uh, still understand only by a comprehensive learning of botany altogether. Next slide. Next slide, uh, Sumati. Ah, yes. I'm just going to show you a couple of plants, why these plants exist on this planet Earth. We have not sufficient information in the public domain, or we have, nobody has tried to understand why such smallest plants do exist. This is supposed to be the smallest flowering plant, Wolfia, flowering aquatic plant. Next slide. And if you look at the size of the flowers under the microscope, very tiny. Just inside the leaf, there is a cavity 
where there is style and stigma and just one single lantern. How these plants are able to uh, propagate themselves, how reproduction takes place, how pollination takes place, who pollinates this flower, whether insect or water or tiny insects, who does it? But how does, what is the mechanism of seed set, seed uh, disposal? There are so many questions yeah, just with this tiny plant itself. The flower size is hardly 0.3 millimeter. Imagine such a tiny flower is able to still pollinate itself and then go for seed set and produce many more plants. There are lots and lots of genetical aspects, genetic information that one need to understand about the smallest plant, smallest flowering plant. Next one. The next one is the largest seed producing one. Uh, <clears throat> Call it as a double coconut, yes. Why such a huge seed? What is the mechanism? Why is it uh, evolved uh, with such intricate or why, uh, such an amorphous structure, beautiful structure, right? We have no answers. Next one. And the largest flower, a single unbranched flower in the case of Arum family, Amorphophallus titanium. Why these plants are not common? why they are restricted to certain habitats alone, right? Why these plants are, are, uh, are not uh, propagating themselves rapidly. There are reasons behind every pattern, every color, every size of the flower and fruit, yet botanists have not understood it, and it is now left to the younger generations. Next one. Next one, uh, Dr. Sumati. Yes. You have seen the uh, uh, largest inflorescence of a single unbranched one. Now take a look at the largest branched inflorescence in the world. You have this in Bangalore. If you go to Lalbagh, probably you would uh, uh, see this palm called Tollipot palm, one of the uh, you know, tallest palms. And uh, it produces an inflorescence, a branched inflorescence. The size of the inflorescence is about six meters in length which means 16 to uh, 20 feet long, such as the uh, you know, uh, uh, beauty of this particular plant, flowers once in its lifetime, monocarpic, and it produces millions of fruits because it's going to die after pl flowering and fruiting. And so the mechanism is that it should produce as many seeds as possible. And we had one uh, chance nearly probably in 2018 or so uh, near a lake bond, there were hundreds of trees flowered on the same season, same time, and that's the picture you are seeing on the left side. The entire hundred trees you know, were, were, could come to flowering, and there was a huge uh, population of honeybees, uh, you know, were multiplied there, and beehives were noticed. And after uh, two years, almost all the trees have fallen down, and the seeds are spread all over. And people carry tons and tons of seeds all over Tamil Nadu and to other states to propagate these kind of wonderful plants. But still, we have not studied the growth and physiology of these plants, genetics of these plants, why these plants exist here, are there any medicinal importance, are there any food value? There are so many questions arising out of uh, such beautiful palms as such. Next one. I'm not going to just describe this one because probably many of you would have learned about this one. Rafflesia, the single largest flower in its diameter. Yes, still attractive one, but you cannot really go and sit near the plant like this boy is sitting because of the uh, you know fetid smell that it produces. This particular plant is pollinated by moths and certain birds, but still the life cycle has not been understood as long as Rafflesia is concerned. There's Still, there are a lot of openings with reference to reproductive biology of plant surface. Next one. Yes, you know about Bolt very well. He was able to run 100 meters in just 9.63 seconds. But my question is, next, next slide. This tree is also nearly about 100 meters. How long it takes from the root to the top to reach uh, for the water molecule. 
how quickly the water molecules can go to the top of the tree, 100 meters. If a bolt can run 9.63 seconds, what is the speed of water molecules through the cells? Billions of cells, the water has to cross to reach the uh, top of the tree. What is the kind of uh, machine we have? Is, do we have any equipment? Uh, is there any industry which can uh, work on it? Or is there any university which is focusing on this kind of research? Still lacking. So these are the openings for a younger botanist. Next one. Yes, you can see beautiful uh, flowers in even in cacti. But how wonderful it will be if you are able to see this cacti in flowering in a small bottle or in a culture oil in a laboratory. Next one. Yes, many plants were you know, uh, produced, uh, many plants were made to produce flowers, in vitro flowering in test tubes and bottles, and even fruits were set in test tubes and bottles, and that's a wonder. But if you are able to make cacti flowering in test tubes and bottles, that's going to be a major discovery, or uh, you can also go for a patent. So such openings are still available in botany. Next one. I will skip this slide. Next, next one. Yes. I just made a small survey within, uh, I know, three districts of Tamil Nadu in the southern uh, India and uh, made the survey and then got these results. I just went to uh, nurseries who are selling plants, like ornamental plants, and uh, 68 nurseries were there. All together, out of the 68 nurseries, only three persons who have studied in botany are owning the nursery. Out of florists, 24 florists are there, out of which no one is a botanist. In the case of vegetable vendors, the just two percentage of botanists, and that too probably after BSc dropout. And in the case of vegetable growers, not the farmers here, just the vegetable growers alone. People extensively cultivate vegetables for the market or the society. In that uh, group, there were only 5% of botanists, and all of them were just you know, BSc graduates. And in the case of horticulturists, about 7% of botanists, and there was only one or two who had a PG in botany. And in the case of landscaping, where botanists are highly required, hardly I could find just 1%. So if this is the uh, level of, you know, uh, uh, people who are working with bot botanical experience, you know, it is not negative, but it shows the kind of awareness that the botany students have. We have plenty of openings. Only thing is we are not trying to explore. The other areas botanists can also learn together is about natural dyes, where the, these, this particular area, I focused on it. And, uh, you know, we got wonderful uh, findings. Next one. People used natural dyes during, uh, you know, uh, for cave painting and other prehistoric times. But how far these dyes have been beneficial in the modern times is still a question. The next slide uh, shows that uh, mats, uh, fine mats produced out of sedges uh, from a particular place called uh, Patamadai in Tirunelveli. And the biology of it was not known. The technique of how dyeing is done to these sedges were not known. So I got ventured into the study. Next one. I studied about these mats, uh, mat fibers and dyes which are used in this particular industry and all that. Uh, it's a fascinating study. Earlier, uh, we found that the uh, fine, super fine silk mats made from Patamadai were sold for about 4,000 a single piece. But now the same mat is now costing around 20,000. There are also mats available for 50,000 rupees. And the same mats, if they are uh, exported elsewhere, the cost is double the amount or triple the amount. Such is the amount, such is the economy one can create with that of uh, you know, uh, natural dice. Next one. I studied the biology of it and the wonderful information we got, all totally new information we got out of studying the biology of this particular uh, math search. Next one. We ventured ourselves into probing are exploring uh, on what are the other plants which can give us natural dyes. This is Bixa orellana, where the seeds are 
you know, uh, you know, abundant in natural dyes. Bixen. Next one. And we use the natural dye for staining plant tissues, especially in the case of fiber tissues like Bixa, or there is also a plant called Sapan, Cisalpinia Sapan, whose dyes can stain plant tissues or plant cells very specifically. And that too, the fiber alone. Here is a section stained uh, with uh, Sapan dye. It stored, uh, stains the uh, uh, fibers tissues alone. Clearin Kaima alone, which was very unique. Next one. So we applied those dyes, you know, where the, uh, the uh, nature of the dye is very unique. This mat, you know, was uh, made for a national level competition on uh, mat weaving uh, technique. But unfortunately, the mat was, you know, uh, lost in the uh, tsunami water during, nine, uh, 2000, uh, I think it was 2004. But after about, uh, you know, uh, a week of uh, time, somebody noticed the uh, mat and then brought this mat to the weaver back and uh, look at the beauty again. The uh, color has not faded. Though it was left in tsunami water, probably tsunami water had salt, saline water, and exposed to sunlight repeatedly, even then the uh, endurance of the dye has not gone. Such is the... Uh, you know, uh, potential of natural dyes, we need to still explore. Next one. <clears throat> and we gave the techniques to uh, uh, artisans and weavers all over. People were fascinated about this dye and they were able to make drawings and paintings, watercolor, whatnot. Next one. And uh, the dye, the, the uh, technique was demonstrated at national level as well as International level, we had been to uh, you know two or three uh, international uh, demonstrations where we made people aware about the potential of natural dyes. Next one, yes, even in Bangalore there was a, a congress, in Hyderabad there was a congress where my myself and my wife was able to uh, you know uh, make the uh, youngsters to get into this field of uh, natural dyeing. Next one. And varied colors of fibers. Fibers can be dyed with natural colors. Next one. We did not just stop with that. We had a critical thinking. If these dyes can stain color, fibers, and other uh, 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 pro materials, why not this dye can stain a chromosome at the cellular level? Because the dye that we use in uh, botanical histochemistry or anatomy is hematoxylin, but the plant that we focus, Cisalpinia sapan, also comes from the same family. So we gave our thinking to uh, use sapan dye for stain in chromosomes. It was wonderful. All these chromosomes could be colored using sapan dye as well. The next level was that when, if it can dye a chromosome on nucleus, why not the DNA? Because the DNA at the laboratories are stained, colored by Ethidium bromide, highly carcinogenic stuff. The ethidium bromide dye is a highly carcinogenic. Why do we use such a carcinogenic dye? Instead, we can go for a natural dye one. So our aim was to apply this one in the uh, next level, next slide. Yes, one of my students ventured and ventured into this program in Bangalore. Next one, and she is now a owner of a patent. Uh, called Tinctoran. This is a nuclear stain, which can stain nucleus, which can stain DNA, which can also stain uh, RNA, and it is seven times more sensitive than ethidium bromide. And she has a patent for it. Now she has a industry on her own, and she is able to produce these dyes in very, very small quantities and sell it in dollars. Such is the uh, ability, uh, such is the application of very small thinking or very small experiment that you do in your lab laboratory. Next one. So because of that, the uh, carcinogenic dye can be now replaced with that of natural dye that we have uh, obtained from Cisalpinia sapan. This slide, the purpose for showing this slide is to under make you understand botany is not just alone. Botany is diverse. 
botanical applications are all over the world. And just by understanding uh, botany, we can understand any other living organisms subject. So uh, in the recent past, there are nearly 1,800 species of bacterial genomes have been fully understood. This genomic sequence, uh, understanding of sequence in uh, and genomics in bacterium is just because of the potential, the uh, understanding that went with that of botanical uh, cells, tissues, and botany assets. Next one. When in the case of plants, how many plant genomes have been now understood? The first plants to be uh, genetically understood was Arabidopsis. You know pretty well that this plant is able to uh, complete its life cycle just in 18, uh, 18 days. And such, if that is the speed of the plant to uh, grow and produce seeds and set and die in 20, uh, 18 days, its genetic makeup should be probably unique. And that is the reason why people uh, sequenced the uh, genome of uh, Arabidopsis in 2000 itself. And after that, nearly about next one, nearly another one more plant was recognized to have smallest genome that was a grass from uh, a grass family, Brachypodium uh, species. Yes, even that had a wonderful clues about information about genomes of other plants. Next one. So the uh, human genome project also drawn several vital informations based on plant genomics and uh, gene mechanism, gene functions from plants as such. So if you look at the uh, the uh, you know the uh, discoveries and the contributions of NIH all over the world, the uh, subject is ever elaborating or expanding, and uh, people are, you know, uh, there are a lot of deficiency in terms of uh, finding real good people for genomic studies. There is a wide opening for plant biologists or plant botanists to uh, get into such fields. Next one. How, why important is the genome? Not just your genome, but the genome of every organism. It has to be, uh, you know, it can be understood. Only when uh, the uh, genetic makeup of the entire organism is understood. Next one. The genomic sequencing is rapid. And now one can take a small, uh, tiny instrument into the field and then try to identify the uh, genome sequence within the field itself. So uh, based on such results, now, uh, you know, a uh, very dramatic uh, discovery has been uh, done that if you look at the uh, human genome and the genome of a plant, called Paris Japonica, it is amazing because the human, human genome is just three uh, picograms in weight, but the uh, genome of uh, the chromosome weights, weight of Paris Japonica is about 152 picograms. Look at the kind of, uh, you know, uh, genome size. It is so much with reference to this particular plant, which indicates that this particular plant must have evolved long back. It has a very unique evolutionary mechanism. Who has to understand? You and I, or you alone can do it. Next one. Probably this is one of the last slides. When uh, Einstein applied for a job in an university, his application was rejected, saying that his hypothesis and the experiments he has done with reference to light is not acceptable. But now the entire world is now talking about Einstein. Entire world is relying on Einstein's principles on physics, whatever it is. It is never think that if you are rejected by a person, you are gone. No, never give up. Your potential is so much. It's all depends on your understanding. It's all depends on your uh, potential. So uh, expand your wings and fly anywhere you want to go. Next slide. Yes. Probably you would have seen this person. 
you know this person yes dr sumadhi ganesan she was my uh, uh, probably uh, five year five or six years junior to me at uh, madras christian college look at her contributions look at her findings look at her uh, you know uh, the uh, subject depth that she has in botany a lady candidate who can go up to uh, andaman nicobar islands and then uh, explore herself explore the uh, diversity of plants diversity of other organisms too and the mines and nicobar islands are not so secure in terms of uh, you know security issues but a women candidate was able to uh, explore extensively and then she was able to make the best thesis in the madras university during 2006 in botany such as the level such as the uh, you know uh, um you know, the uh, kind of a field botany has given to sumadhi and she was able to make or publish several new species out of which i just mentioned two or three new species on uh, her own guide and also a new genus right and uh, many other contributions from based on her doctoral thesis alone i think that will be one single uh, uh, you know uh, uh, evidence that botany is botany is giving a uh, botany has within uh, for millions of people right so sumati has probably inspired uh, inspiring uh, candidate for you uh, students and i don't think i can cite any anybody else other than sumati for inspiration into botany because initially uh, or when we were in M- msc we never n- knew that that she is going to make so much of contributions she has made more than uh, 40 or 50 papers in national and uh, international uh, journals it's all because of botany it's all because of her fascination it's all because of her focus and interest and she never has given up botany i suppose probably i think she would be a uh, Uh, a fascinating person and a teacher for you and you have lots and lots to uh, learn from dr sumadhi right i think that this lecture probably uh, is because of uh, sumadhi alone and i also would like to thank all of you for your patience listening though i have uh, taken extra 48 minutes probably to uh, complete my lecture and finally what i would like to uh, uh, say to my students is that botany is not the least subject botany is a subject which can give you a comprehensive understanding comprehensive knowledge uh, on all kinds of living organisms just by understanding botany you can be a major contributor on this planet earth thank you so much everyone for your patience listening thank you so much for the organizers and my special thanks to dr sumadhi thank you and uh, if you have any questions you are most welcome to ask me uh, provided there is still time available uh thank you sir for such kind words that was totally unexpected thank you so much sir thank you yeah now the session is uh, open for questions participants uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions please raise your <clears throat> and we will allow you to unmute and ask questions one by one uh so maybe you can put the last slide probably gargi please unmute yourself gargi unmute yourself uh good afternoon sir good morning good morning sir. Uh, yeah yes uh so uh, this is regarding a doubt and a query that i always had since my bachelors uh that is uh, when you see uh, you're talking about uh, the genome sequencing and uh the evolution sir uh if we talk about uh, uh the family is like poaceae for example the very common one that is a rhizocytoma rice so yeah. the genome 
uh, size is approximate. I mean, it's it's in three hundred or something. But the coding genes, the annotated genes, the coding genes, which uh, are approximately way more uh, than human beings. Uh, and I could never understand, sir, uh, that why, I mean, something which is, I mean, uh, considerably much less evolved uh, than human beings, whereas human beings would have only, uh, say, 18,000 to 20,000 uh, coding uh, genes or 25,000 according to the Human Genome Project that we have right now. Uh, but a rice plant, which has much more annotated genes. So what does it really signify in the line of evolution? Yeah, that's a wonderful uh, question. See, uh, that indicates that it has, you know, uh, modified its genetic makeup several times, or it has adapted itself to sustain on the varying kinds of you know, weather conditions and climatic conditions. Uh, dear participants, there seems to be some technical uh, issue, so please wait for this uh, for sir to rejoin. Sorry, there was a you know, disturbance. I got disconnected. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> the genome size of rice is huge than the uh, human beings because the plant has faced so much of, uh, you know, uh, different environmental conditions. <clears throat> and proportionally, it has acquired so much of uh, uh, the genes to modify itself to sustain on this planet Earth. That's what uh, every uh, uh, other organism may also have, like uh, the plant which I said, Paris Japonica, has you know, seven-fold increase or uh, many-fold increase compared to that of uh, human genome. Human genome is not uh, you know, uh, as modified much, but compared to plants, it is lesser. So uh, it, it depends on the uh, time which has taken or uh, different environmental conditions that the plant has faced to acquire and modify their genomic sequences. Yes, sir. That is, uh, that is thank you. That's a beautiful question. Anisha, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Sumati, can I also ask you to uh, show the last slide? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so one yeah. minute. Yeah, please. Good morning, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. So thank <clears throat> you so much for your talk. Uh, it really, you know, threw light upon various topics that we were really unaware about. I have a question, sir. So we are all uh, botany students. Yeah. And what would be our scope in the field of molecular biology, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, show the last slide. Yes, that's what I was trying to uh, you know, uh, emphasize. The reason for showing uh, information on genomics is to uh, make you understand that, you know, uh, compared to uh, the molecular studies in animals or other than botanical uh, organisms, now it's very easy in case of botany. And plant systems offer very easy experiments to understand molecular biology. And uh, when it comes to uh, DNA isolation or uh, PCR amplifications, or in terms of sequencing, or in terms of characterizing genes, you know, we have loads and loads of information in the public domain. Plus, we have very advanced equipment. Last more slide, last slide. Uh, very more advanced uh, instruments to understand botanical systems. So the openings for plant uh, botanists and molecular biology is wide, very wide. And uh, you know, uh, when it comes to research, I think molecular biology, with reference to botany, is excelling compared to other subjects. And uh, 
you have a wider uh, range of uh, choices. Thank you. The last slide, uh, Sumadhi. Last, next one. Thank you, sir. Yeah, next. Yes, I think this is the last slide that I wanted to show you. It's up to you to decide. Any other questions? Karen, Karen John, you can unmute yourself and ask your question here. Okay, uh, Kavya. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I am a first year biotechnology student just admitted this year, and due to NEP, we had to drop one subject and my combination was BTCV. So I had to choose between chemistry and botany uh, and I had chosen botany because I thought that it would be beneficial in plant biotechnology or in new inventions uh, like in medicinal plants or in, but uh, then if we go into pharmaceutical companies and all is chemistry more beneficial than botany over there sir? Both are equally beneficial. If your uh, pre uh, preference is pharmaceutical uh, chemistry or pharmaceutical science, I think uh, you know uh, where the uh, uh, kind of research at the pharma pharmaceutical level or pharmacognosy is with reference to plants more, because now all chemists are you know uh, focusing on plant-based chemicals, even in the beginning. We understood chemistry just based on plants only, right? And then later on to other organisms. So uh, even now, the uh, you know the uh, perception has not changed much, or uh, the uh, interest has not changed much. People show more uh, fascination towards plant plant based chemicals because there are you know, thousands of chemicals which are still not being discovered from plants as such. And even at the uh, you know uh, National Institute of Cancer (NIC) uh, in US, they are now looking into plants for treating cancer. Compared to other uh, radioactive and other kind of uh, treatments, they are hazardous, they are dangerous, or they have lots and lots of side effects. But if they get one single plant or at least group of plants which can uh, control cancer cells that would be wonderful and we will not be losing all our precious life just by cancer alone so uh, many chemists many pharmacognosists are looking towards ayurvedic uh, siddha type of treatments where how plants are used for treating cancer it is not just for cancer alone many types many kinds of human diseases animal diseases and uh, other organisms diseases can be cured by botanical molecules. So uh, probably your choice would be better if you take up chemistry and plants together. So then if I choose chemistry as my elective, then yeah. means in further go, I will not be lacking in chemistry, no, sir? No, not, not necessarily. By understanding plant science or plant chemistry or plant assets, you have a wide opening or wide, uh, you know, uh, area uh, uh, where you can understand about uh, plant molecules, so chemical then molecules. So biotechnology, botany, and the chemistry in my open elective is the best option, sir. I tell you, my dear, bi biotechnology focuses much on the instrumentation part. It is just the technique, how one can bring in all kinds of life sciences together. But botany is not like that. Botany will teach you fundamentals. By this fundamentals, your application would be, you know, uh, uh, wider. But in the case of biotechnology, you know, you will be just restricted yourself with techniques how you can uh, you know, put in or uh, pull in plants 
or animals or bacterium or any other kind of microbes to uh, you know make a product using a technique that's what biotechnology will ultimately aim for but botany is not like that okay yes yeah any more questions from the participants dear participants anyone else to ask the question uh, yes ma'am okay good afternoon sir yeah please uh sir i have the same question like i am from first year microbiology student and uh, like i am having a really tough time choosing between chemistry and uh, botany okay i'm not i'm not much interested in research thing but i'm like more interested in the industries and pharmaceutical companies very good <clears throat> so so can you please suggest me what will be perfect like uh, what can i opt for <laughs> see it's a dynamic uh, system even uh, after my bsc i aimed for microbiology at uh, madras university which offered pg microbiology which was about 3 years honors course and if i had learnt microbiology probably i would have been working on uh, uh, covid viruses right but you know uh, just one year lapsed i had to choose botany and i have not lost my interest i have to learn science you have to look in terms of understanding science not just the disciplines alone whether you learn microbiology or whether you learn micro uh, plant science or biotechnology you are learning science that's how it should be taken as and that is the reason why even in other uh, developed countries the specialization is kept at the last level not at the uh, fundamental level so at the fundamental level one has to learn science so science is a combination of all subjects right starting from your physics chemistry botany zoology microbiology and what not but specialization when it comes to specialization there you are interest where where your focus makes the uh, a difference where you want to specialize but i think at this level you need to learn about science that's what i would advise so it's not going to make a much difference if you take microbiology or uh, botany as such but just for take a subject which can give you a very broader understanding not a very narrow understanding probably uh, in my opinion just my own op opinion microbiology i think it gives you a very narrow understanding of about microbes a lot but botany is inclusive of all that is it okay okay thank you yeah. yes uh, dear participants uh, if there are further questions related to the subject choices i think we can have uh, this counseling session in the at the departmental level uh, so we can proceed further yeah thank you so much sir for your engaging and thought provoking talk i feel there could be nothing better than this and uh, dear students please hold on in this very occasion we also have some of our outshining botany alumni sharing their views to drive your interest to plant sciences come let's listen to them one by one and get little more motivated towards the plant sciences yeah great thank you thank you sir